Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, this is video number four. And today we're going to be talking about 2.5D and 3D packaging. Uh, this is a very hot topic, a lot of people are talking about it. Um, is it the future of packaging? Uh, we'll see. Now we'll, we will be talking about uh, some of the interposer things that we talked in the previous video. So if you have not watched that one, I highly encourage you to go and do that. Um, without further ado, I am Alonso and I'm going to take you along with me for this journey. So let's get to it. So first of all, how did we get here? Uh, just a quick review of what we talked about in previous videos. Uh, we first start with single die chips. Now single die chips have very high performance as chips because companies could concentrate on creating devices that fell into the realm of exper expertise. And also each chip could be implemented at the most appropriate technology node. Uh, so individually they were great. However, when put together, uh, they were larger, more expensive, they consumed more power, they could have more faults, and they overall had longer interconnects, which led to a lower performance overall as the board. We then get into multi-chip modules. Uh, when companies were trying to increase functionality, it started around the 1990s. Uh, and they, evolved, they, they involved a number of digital only dies and they were mounted on the same package substrate but still connected through wiring or through um, wire bonds. Uh, after that, uh, to try to decrease all of that, we had the system on chip. Now the system on chip still has one of the highest performance and low power usages up to today. However, they are so complicated and um, so resource intensive that sometimes they're not really worth it. Uh, they can have one or more processor cores, memory blocks, peripheral functions, hardware accelerators, all of that into one single piece of silicon. Uh, and they can also add RF functions on the same die, but some of those things can be less than optimal. Uh, another consideration to make is the time and expense involved in re-spinning the design. Uh, these chips, once they're made, Basically, they're going to stay like that. It's hard to make upgrades or to repair any of that because everything is put into one single chip. So in order to make that a little bit easier, and there's an evolution from multi-chip modules, we finally get to system in package or SIP. Now SIP are multiple bare dice and or chip scale packages, devices that are mounted on a common substrate, uh, which is used to connect all of them together. The substrate and components then are placed in or built into a single package. Uh, each of these dies is implemented using that domain's most appropriate technology processes and when it comes to respinning the device in the future you may only need to adjust one part of the device instead of having to change the entire dies. So that's one of the biggest advantages of SIPs in comparison to SOCs. Uh, it's also possible to create small SIPs and then mount these into larger SIPs and this is known as package in package or you can mount SIPs on top of other SIPs and this is known as package on package. So then how does this all fit to 2.5D and 3D? All of these terms, how do they relate? So it can be a little bit confusing but SIP is just anything that's multiple dies on a common substrate into a single package. So therefore 2.5D and 3D are both subcategories of SIPs. So what is the trick? 2.5D and 3D use the silicon interposer that we talked about in the previous video. Now the 2.5D introduces the silicon interposer and through silicon VS technology and the 3D mounts two or more dies on top of each other and has active interposer or active layers with through silicon VS. So let's take a look at the interposer, a little bit of a review. Like I said, we have a whole video on this if you'd like to go check it out. But just a quick review, the silicon interposer is just a layer between the substrate and the dies. Uh, now, it is more than just packaging. It also serves as an interconnection. And it can connect the dies among, among them. It can uh, create communication among the dies. But it also connects the dies to the inputs and outputs in the package substrate. So it serves as a bit of those. Uh, using the through silicon vias to connect to the other side of the package substrate and the redistribution layer to connect the chips to each other and to send the signals to where they need to be. Uh, now the silicon interposer can be active or passive. Passive interposers just serves as interconnections 
Well, active interposers have fully functional embedded systems in them. And uh, these are fabricated in the foundries, which are the ones that deal with everything that has to do with silicon. Now let's look at the specifics of 2.5D packaging. Uh, 2.5D packaging uses the silicon interposer between the SIP substrate and the dies. Uh, and then the dies will be flip chipped onto this interposer. It uses the through silicon vias and redistribution layer to connect the dies to one another. Uh, and it also connects them to the inputs and outputs, uh, like we just mentioned. Uh, it has horizontal integration, but it's worth noting that this horizontal integration is on top of the interposer. So like we can see in this picture here, we have the interposer, and then on top of the interposer, we will have the chips. But these chips will always be connected horizontally. They will not be on top of each other. Um, and, and then finally, a lot of people like to refer to 2.5D packaging as a stepping stone towards 3D, but that seems to not be the case. Actually, 2.5D seems to have a lot of advantages of its own um, that we'll go into in the next slide. So what are some of the advantages of 2.5D packaging? Well, 2.5D packaging is much smaller than traditional packaging. Uh, like we can see here, 2D packaging has uh, the components separated, mounted onto the PCB, and connected with wire bonds, while 2.5D can implement everything onto one single package with multifunctionality and much lower interconnections, which is another one of our big advantages. These shorter interconnections, thanks to the interposer, lead to higher speed uh, and higher performance, and then it also leads to lower power usage because the, there is less resistance in the wires when trying to communicate with the chips. Another big advantage of 2.5D is that it allows for heterogeneous integration. Uh, you can pick and choose different parts from different manufacturers uh, and they can all fit on the interposer and then you'll just have to make a design for the interposer that works for your selected chips. Now, uh, also it has a better heat management than 3D uh, and while you still need to uh, be careful with it, uh, this is one of the main issues that 3D has that 2.5D seems to be better with. And another good thing about 2.5D is that the interposer, which is made of silicon, uh, matches the coefficient of thermal expansion with the actual die, which can lead to um, less stress under different situations where the temperature might change. Now, what are some of the disadvantages of 2.5D? It's not all as great as it may sound. 2.5D uh, is actually quite hard to integrate. Uh, it requires a lot of advanced knowledge and also needs very advanced technological planning and execution. Um, it requires a deep understanding of many technologies and the perfect design may combine off-the-shelf chips and custom chiplets, standard CMOS and exotic materials, maybe even a mix of different processing nodes. And all of this knowledge and all of this technology <coughs> has to be put together uh, and like you can see we need very advanced machinery and all of that can uh, reflect into the elevated costs the, for these chips. Uh, they're usually more expensive than some of the traditional chips. Uh, even with all the advantages it has, it's still very hard to manufacture. And also because it has so many components and so many parts to this process, uh, it's more unreliable when it comes to its manufacturing. Uh, and some parts of the process can have a lower yield than traditional packaging. Now what about 3D packaging? Uh, 3D packaging seems to be the talk in the market right now. What is it? How does it work? Well it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a vertical and horizontal integration uh, inside the package. So uh, it doesn't always have to be horizontal but it can uh, and like we can see in this drawing here some of the chips can be integrated vertically but they can also be integrated horizontally and that is uh, a 3D chip. It uses the active interposer so these interposer, these these dies here will have through silicon vias uh, and while they will keep their functionality uh, so the through silicon vias will go through active layers however it is worth noting that one when there is um, a through silicon vias in the active layer you have to leave a keep out zone which is an area around the through silicon vias where you cannot place active components or else they could be damaged and it could lead to failure of the chip. 
It's also worth noting some uh, specific type of architecture known as 3D stacks, which are group of groups of dies that perform the same function. They're just stacked on top of each other, as we can see in this lower picture here. And uh, usually, um, these are used for memory or other things. And you can think about it as kind of stacking two, the same way you would stack two batteries on top of each other to increase its voltage. You can do that with memory chips, and you will increase the available storage. Um, and 3D, uh, is it the future of packaging? A lot of people think seem to think so, uh, but apparently they're best suited for application-specific ICs, and they may not be the solution for all of our packaging problems. So what are the advantages of 3D? Well, they have an even smaller size than 2.5D. Uh, by being able to stack them horizontally, uh, keep in mind these images and these diagrams are not to scale. Uh, the horizontal footprint of these chips are much bigger than its horse uh, than its vertical one. So when you stack them vertically, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But you're, you know, duplicating or triplicating or however many layers you have, you're the performance of your chip. Um, it also uh, works with more than Moore's law because it has an increased functionality density. It's not just uh, more transistors; it's more functions per unit area. We also, of course, thanks to the three silicon vias, we have shorter wiring, which leads to reduced interconnect delays, low power consumption, and reduced capacitance. And then finally, it also allows for heterogeneous uh, system on chips designs onto different dies. It uh, provides a flexible way to carry out the heterogeneous system on chip design by integrating disparate technologies such as memory and logic circuits, radio frequency, and mixed signal components onto different dies that are then integrated into the 3D. So you can have basically a whole system into the single chip. So what are the what are the things? Why are these chips not the solution to to all our needs? Uh, it does have uh, some major disadvantages, and the biggest one is arguably the heat, heat management. Uh, it has a lot of heat problems, uh, and when the chip gets overheated, it can reduce performance. If you double the heat density without any improvements in cooling capacity, it can lead to more than a 30% degradation in performance. And that can be a big hit, especially in critical tasks. Now, uh, because of the heat sink that usually is used for heat management or some of the management heat management techniques, there tends to be a heat differential and a heat flow from the bottom layers or the areas that are more heat intensive towards the areas where there's heat dissipation and this is something that you have to be careful. Uh, now the way to treat this is usually heat sinks and thermal vias which redistribute and redirect the heat towards the, the areas that help deal with it. Um, and you have to be careful during design to avoid critical wiring in, in the areas with the higher heat concentration because otherwise you can affect your performance even more so. So besides this heat management problem which is uh, uh, pretty big. We also have other issues with uh, the through silicon vias generating stress between the different layers. Now because the through silicon vias is made of copper and the layers are usually made of silicon, uh, they have a different um, coefficient of thermal expansion and when in different uh, higher temperatures the copper can cause some stress on the layer. And this is why we have the keep out zone on active layers where you have an area of about 20 microns around the through silicon vias where you should not have any active components otherwise they can be damaged due to stress and they can lead to a lower performance or even failure. And then finally we have a even, an even higher design cost due to the high technology. If 2.5D is hard to implement, 3D is even harder and uh, it just leads to a very elevated cost. So now that we've seen what they are and, and, and how they fit into different tasks, what are they being used for? Who is, who is using 2.5D and who is using 3D and what are they using it for? So the first commercial 2.5D IC uh, was the Silex Vertex 7 2000T. And here we have an image of both the outside and the inside of the chip and we can see how it has uh, the substrate uh, the interposer and then the dies on top of it. Um, 
and also uh, apparently Google AlphaGo TPU 2.0 is using it as an AI chip uh, so 2.5D seems to have different different functions seems to be more versatile now in terms of uh, of 3D ICs the first commercial you use was Sony's PSP or uh, PlayStation Portable in 2004 and it used it for DRAM memory uh, it was manufactured by Toshiba and this is the the console here and as you can see it was very important using 3D one of its main uh, advantages is the size and so 3D can really be used for things uh, like mobile or small devices that need high functionality in a small space uh, and another another thing that is also a mobile use that used some 3D integration was iPhone's 5S motherboard uh, now it had the Apple A7 processors and it was stacked with different memory uh, memory modules however it's worth noting that this is not full 3D uh, it, didn't, it was not using a silicon interposer to connect the chips vertically however it does make use of a 3D architecture and here we can see the processor and some of um, some of the um, flash memory over here and they were integrated in a vertical um, architecture now 3D technology has been advancing and uh, you can get up to 96 layer chips commercially available right now now in 2017 Samsung started doing some flash memory chip with 8 stack 64 layers uh, chips in 2019 they did a one terabyte flash chip with 16 stack 9 uh, VNAND dies and then as of April of 2019 you can get memory devices with up to 96 layers commercially and uh, some of those are produced by Toshiba which is the same one that made the memory flash for the PlayStation Portable uh, so that's a little bit of like what the industry is looking like um, just as a quick recap uh, let's let's just go over what we talked about traditionally we had 2.2d uh, packaging and then with the introduction of SIP system and package we started to get into uh, 2.5d and 3d with the use of the interposer now 2.5d uh, it, uh, integrates the chips horizontally onto the interposer uh, which connects to the chips and to the die it's a big step up in uh, uh, in density and functionality density and also transistor density um, and it seems to be a lot more flexible and, and it had, seems to be more versatile than some of the 3D things which uh, are stuck vertically on top of each other and they have active layers where the TSV goes through them but they're used mostly for for memory chips um, and you know 2.5D and 3D seem to be the future of the packaging industry uh, I'm very excited to see where we uh, go from here and how packaging evolves from now so I guess we'll have to uh, keep an eye out for that but for now I hope uh, this was educational and you guys enjoyed the video you guys learned a lot and I will see you in the next one uh, so thanks for watching and goodbye